Oh, we are live. I'm Shayna Searcy. Thanks for joining me today for this um, Santa's Little Helper gnome painting. I have been going gnome crazy, if you haven't noticed. Uh, I have a couple of gnome videos up, um, and I promise I will be getting back to our um, holiday card uh, ideas uh, going forward. I have another one coming out Sunday, so those are going to be up shortly. Um, and also inside my Studio Crew classroom, uh, which will be in the description of this video. You just have to give me like 10 or 15 minutes after it goes up um, uh, for the recording. But in the Studio Crew classroom, there are also additional um, lessons on holiday card creation with watercolor, where I go over all the different elements of holiday card making or at least a bunch of different ones to make about a hundred different versions. And we talk about, uh, we talk about composition, we talk about color schemes and how that will change the look and feel of your cards. We talk about all the individual elements and how to paint each of those. So that's something in the Studio Crew Classroom. And again, that will be up and available. And then with all of the gnome paintings, I don't go over drawing, but if you want to get a traceable, I will put these videos up in the Studio Crew Classroom with the drawing and the traceable if you need to get that. So that's just a monthly membership, um, and then you can get access to the traceables and all those videos as well as additional content. So let's get started with our gnome. This guy is so cute, and I actually got this idea from another... Uh, artist or an image that I saw some kind of not exactly the same but had like a gnome dragging something and I added Santa's bag here and some stripes on his hat we had a little poll last night stripes or no stripes on Facebook and overwhelmingly everybody liked the stripes but um, you don't have to add stripes or decoration to your hat so let's go over supplies really quickly um I am going to be painting with my my brushes. I am using rounds. I have a size 10 and a size 4 Velvet Touch, Princeton Velvet Touch, and a Princeton Select size 4. Um, any round brushes will do. Those just happen to be the two I have. My Silver Black Velvet brush is MIA right now. I will find it. My favorite brush. Um, I'm using my palette of core paints, and I'll be primarily using red and sap green uh, for this image, as well as mixing some colors, red, sap green, Van Dyke brown, and then I'll be mixing some colors a bit for the nose and the shading of the beard. Okay, so not too many colors, but I will have to mix this flesh tone color here and the gray in the beard. You can just use a Payne's gray or a neutral tone or even a black and just dilute it quite a bit to get the gray as well. Okay. So now that I have my, let's keep this guy in frame here. I have my outline, which I have transferred to my watercolor paper. This is Arsh watercolor paper, 100% cotton, but whatever you have will work fine as long as, you know, I highly recommend 140, 140 pound cold press or, or heavier, but 140 pound will do great. Um, rather than like a mixed media paper or um, some other types of paper that just won't hold water very well. All right, so we are going to start by doing the bag first, and then we're going to do the hat and the robes, skip around to the shoe and mittens and the nose and beard. And then we're gonna put in the shadows underneath the bag and finally our white stripes. The only other material that I will be using in addition to watercolor paint will be the fabulous Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. If you don't have this and you want something similar, if you have white gouache, that's great. Or if you just have a little white acrylic paint, it'll look a little different. White acrylic paint dries a little glossy um, where this dries matte like the watercolor. So use what you have available to you. So let's get started. Oh, hello, Rhonda. And good morning from Boston. Hello from Boston. I'm in the Northeast as well in New York. Parts of New York right now are getting like slammed with um, snow, like super slammed, like 60 inches. And I think they have two feet right now. 
but not where I am. I have no snow, I have sunshine. All right, so the first color I'm pulling out is some cadmium red. And I'm also actually gonna pull out some alizarin crimson. In fact, you know what? We're just gonna use alizarin crimson on this, I think. So cadmium red is gonna give you more of um, that bright, bright red, like traditional um, red, Christmassy red. The alizarin crimson is gonna have a little bit of a darker kind of purple undertone to it. No, I'm not getting all that snow, Rhonda, my goodness. I mean, we have we had a really bad ice storm last year that had us out of power for five days. Um, so I'm hoping not to repeat that again this year. Um, I don't know where you all are at, but do you guys all get snow where you are? Certainly Boston, I know you get snow. All right, so we have our alizarin crimson. And for our bag, we're gonna start um, with putting the color on the bottom and then adding water and blending upwards. Let me just grab my towel so I have something to dab on. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start by loading up my brush and I'm just gonna start at the bottom of the bag here. Do, do, do. These gnomes have been like so pop. Who knew that gnomes were so popular, but they are. And I think they're just so cute. So I hope I'm not overdoing it, but I just love all the different versions and variations. And this is like a really popular one with younger painters too, to have gnomes as the subject matter because they think they're super cute. All right. So now I have a nice good base on there. I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm going to start to kind of carefully work the color up, trying to stay in my outline. I left my outline pretty dark for y'all so you could kind of see where I'm working. You could definitely lighten your outline a little. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. So this is kind of step one and we're going to add in and you'll see on here, you can start to see you're getting some different definitions. So this is lighter here, darker here. This bag, we wanna communicate that there's stuff in it and then it has kind of lumps and bumps and wrinkles. And we're gonna do that by adding in some shadows. So this is step one. Now I'm working on 100% um, cotton paper. So this step is a little easier when you're working on cotton paper that kind of stays wet for a little while. So I'm just pulling out some color. But now I'm gonna take just a little um, dioxazine purple here, and we're gonna use this for our shadows later. Oh, I didn't mention that in the beginning, but yes, dioxazine purple. And I'm mixing that with my red a little bit, and I'm just gonna start to add, drop in, some areas of shadow while it's still wet. I do want it to be wet. I don't want these to be harsh lines. So I'm kind of going under some areas. There's a wrinkle or a crease over here. Can you all see that okay? And there's some creases over here. And these don't have to be super, oh, you like the Daniel Smith moon glow for shadows? You know, I have some moon glow and I'm not gonna lie, I, ha I don't use it often. I loved it when I first got it as a color, but it's just one of those paints that kind of went in the, went in the stock and I haven't taken out again. Really when I got these core paints, I just really started to fall in love with them. So adding just a few more areas here. And it is wet on wet when you first put it out yeah, the granulation. Yeah, I love the granulation of Daniel Smith too. So Daniel Smith, a lot of their colors are heavily granulated colors. And what that means is, for those who don't know what granulation means, um, it's just a separation. Uh, so all of our colors and pigments are made out of different, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Elements, but... Uh, minerals, like a lot of times there are different minerals, especially the Daniel Smith line that create the colors. And it's just the separation of 
the different minerals and that create the pigments as it dries. So some settle and they start to pull apart and spread a little bit, which some people hate, but some people love it. I love it. So ultramarine is a color that in pretty much any line is going to be slightly granulating. So that's a good one if you have it to just experiment and see what I mean to like really look at it. As it dries, you can kind of see the pinks and the, um, the blues that come together to make that color. All right, I think I'm done with the bag for now. I'm just going to let it dry and then I can always revisit it later. This one is a little darker on the top. I'm gonna pull out some color. So you can always go back, especially when you're, depending on how um, staining your colors are. So the color, the brand I'm using Core is a highly staining watercolor, um, but I can still, because it's not 100% cotton, it hasn't dried completely, I can still pull out. So I'm gonna pull out a highlight there. I'm gonna pull out one kind of right here under this shadow to make that more apparent, and like one right here. So there's like little present knobs sticking out right there. So where there's highlights, those come forward, and where there are shadows, those are in recess, so they're moving away from us. Let's see how that works right there. And then just a little shadow underneath. Let's pull out another highlight kind of right there. There we go. I'm gonna make this one a little longer because they were both kind of rounded there. Now some interesting shapes. Rhonda, you like uh, Mahalo Mission Gold paints. Yeah, those are really popular. I don't have any of those. Um, I definitely have brands that are still on my bucket list that I should, that I would love to add to my collection just to see how they work. All right, so let's move on to the hat. So the hat we are going to do pretty much in all sap green so core sap green is by far my favorite sap green hi dawn welcome thank you so much for joining me your first live i appreciate you coming i know it's always hard for people to find time to just sit down with a live but i love that you know we can do it live which is a whole different feel than a recorded video and then people can watch it later so and still get the the um the teaching part out of it or get the the instruction that's what I was looking for all right so we're gonna do the hat and the same with the hat so if we look here um the thing that makes this painting the most interesting is that it has um shadows and highlights that make everything look more three-dimensional so on the hat here it's very subtle but you can see this side of the hat is slightly darker and also this underside here is slightly darker because naturally this would be in shadow because it's not getting the light from above because it's underneath and this also is kind of crooking under and it's under its own self so this crook is above this so it's going to be a little darker on this side creating a natural um, shadow and highlight so we're going to do that by again just starting with our sap green, this is just pure sap green by core. So different sap greens are going to be, um, kind of have a different tone to them. I find that sap green is one of those colors where it's so different between the different brands, which is why core is my favorite go-to. Windsor & Newton is very light, uh, much too kind of yellow for me, or like, it's just not, the right saturation of pigment. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, and if you find you have a sap green that is not as olivey in color that you like, if you add some red to it, it might help. All right, so I've done that and now I'm just gonna take a clean brush and water and blend this out. And it might seem dramatic at first, but you can keep blending until you kind of get the right ratio of shadow to highlight. So that's pretty dramatic at the moment. That's okay. You can always add more if you remember that. 
Dawn, is this my regular time for lives? Um, no, because I don't do anything regularly yet. And I know that is a no-no and I should be more regular, but I'm pretty, I don't, I can't say that I'm new to this anymore, but I'm new to making this my full-time work in terms of painting um, as my full-time profession, uh, which I do not only these uh, videos, but um, I do some online tutorials. I teach in person and I do commissions as well as my own work in galleries now. Um, so I do that and I'm a photographer. So to answer your question, I don't have a specific regular time, but I know I need to start doing that and doing these more regularly. Paper. Um, the paper that I'm using, I am using Arch or Arches, um, as it's more commonly known in the US. It is a French paper, so um, <laughs> so it is supposed to be pronounced Arch, I guess, but um, we call it Arches around here. So if you can get cotton paper, I know Arch is a... Um, is sometimes a higher price point for beginners. Uh, and I totally get that. I did not use this paper for a very long time um, until I was really confident and could invest some more money. Uh, but any, Fabriano makes some good cotton papers. Anytime you can get yourself to full cotton, it will make your life easier uh, while you're painting, especially to do things like nice transitions and wet on wet technique and things like that. So we are done with our hat. So you can see it's darker on this side and we can add some more detail later on. Oh, I still have to do the brim actually. So let's get that brim in there. So the brim is basically the same thing, except I am gonna put a darker line to kind of separate this roll from the one above it. So from right to left, it's the same concept of darker and I did switch my brush. I'm now using my size four. Just cause I was about to go into a smaller area but we can finish this up. So same thing with the brim. So it's darker on one side, lighter on the other but I'm gonna let that dry for a second. I don't want it to be super wet. And then I'm gonna add a little very concentrated sap green. And you could even pull in a little Payne's Gray, my favorite gray. So let that dry just a little bit more. And then just in this crease here, I'm gonna darken it even a little bit more. Now it looks dramatic. I know, I know. We're gonna take our brush and we're gonna blend it. And then when we add on the stripes as well, that is going to take away some of that emphasis. But there, you can see it's got a little bit of a roll. I'm gonna make this top and the shadow. I'll keep my arm out of your way if I can. Yeah, the a big difference uh, for cotton paper. So Dawn, yeah, the there is a big jump between cotton and cellulose or wood pulp paper, which is the everyday kind of paper you would get in your craft stores. Um, but I used Canson for a really long time, Canson XL. Um, they are very different, but you can learn a lot of the basics with Canson. But then you do get to a point where you start to struggle with it when you start doing more advanced techniques. But when you're just learning like basic brush control, how to get up on the tip of your brush, how to use the whole belly of your brush, how to do basic water control, um, Canson is great and you can do a lot of fun projects on it. I do a lot of stuff with kids on Canson and we actually do a lot of experimental things like with salt and with back runs and, and we purposefully kind of do all the wrong things but it creates really fun effects, especially on Canson. Um, so, okay, so now we're gonna do the robe. The robe, nothing special. There, it's gonna be pretty much just putting in a flat wash for most of it. So we're just gonna go under the beard and then you can always go back in and add just a little more color in some areas where there are gonna be shadows. 
So let's just do the sleeve here under the beard. You just gotta go around that little mitten. Yeah, so anyone who is watching this post video, you can check out the description. It's not in there yet. It takes me a few minutes after the video is posted to just copy and paste the description in. Um, in the description, there'll be a link to my supplies and that will take you to my website where I post like all the supplies that I use regularly as a working artist and in most of my videos, um, but it also gives you entry level supplies for paper, brushes, paints of things that I have used before in my watercolor journey. Um, and so those are good recommendations. Now I can't recommend every single thing. There are lots of great things out there. I just haven't personally tried them all. Um, I may someday, I'll get there but I haven't yet. So that can be a great place to start if you're looking. All right, we're gonna do this little sleevey over here and go around our beard. And just add a little bit of green right here. Okay, so we have our robe in. It is a little flat for me. I am gonna add in some shadows, but not quite yet. So you can see on this one, I'll show you. So there's a lot of darker, deeper color right here that's under the beard, under the sleeve, um, just to give that some depth, where this is pretty flat right now. So just get on your first layer of color. I'm actually gonna pull some of this green out here. I'm gonna pull some green off the top. Just a tiny bit, just to lighten that up just a little bit. And then I'm going to take some nice thick, thank you so much, Dawn. She's cheering me on from the comment section. And I'm just gonna take some darker green. And again, we can add some of that Payne's Gray to get that really rich color. You still want it to be green, but it's really gonna give it that depth. And then I'm just gonna blend that out. And then we're gonna move on. A lot of times for folks, you know, as they're painting, they wanna keep the, the section they're working on isn't quite where it's gonna be forever or live forever, and that's totally fine. But don't keep playing with it, especially in watercolor. Sometimes you have to let things dry and reassess. So if you feel like you're frustrated and you've tried one or two times to like correct something or add a shadow and it's not quite getting dark enough, just let it dry. That is like my number one recommendation for all beginner watercolors. Learn to walk away for a few minutes. It will save you a lot of trouble in the long run. Okay, so we're gonna walk away from our robe right now and we're gonna go into our um, mittens and our shoe. So these are gonna be uh, Van Dyke brown. So any brown that has a little red to it will work. You could use burnt sienna, that's a super red brown. Here, let me show you. So this is burnt sienna. The one next to it is Van Dyke brown. You can mix them together, but some kind of brown. You can make your own brown and go find my color mixing videos. Be careful getting next to your green on the shoe if you do the shoe first. Make sure it's dry enough that they're not bleeding in. and blend that out. I don't want the whole thing to be the exact same color. So again, leaving some highlight in one area as he lifts his foot up. The bottom is a little lighter. Just wanna add a little darker color, like right at the heel where it's like touching the ground. And I'll, we'll put a shadow under this later. There we go. All right, yeah, that feels good. Mittens, 
mittens. Um, they can just be a flat wash with your tiny brush. Just get in there. I'm making mine brown. You can make them any color you want. He can have fun, colorful mittens. And I'm just realizing um, I didn't paint the whole bag, the little end of it that's in his hand. That's okay. We'll get back to it. All right, welcome anybody who just joined us. I see a bunch of new people have just popped in. So we're painting our fabulous little garden, or no, not garden, this is not a garden gnome. This is our little Santa's little helper gnome with Santa's red bag here, helping prep for the big day. And just filling that in. Um, so thank you for joining me, any of those new folks popping in. So we've done the majority of his outfit, his gloves, his shoes, the bag here. This little tie is also going to be that Van Dyke brown or uh, your burnt sienna or whatever brown you have. Really, it doesn't matter too much, but I'm going to just add that little tie there around the bag. Oops, I just added a whole bunch of water that did not need to be added, but that's okay. I'm just gonna take my brush, dab it off, and pull it out. There we go. All right, let's do our beard and then our nose. Awesome. Okay, so the beard, I'm going to go the easy route for y'all this morning, and I'm going to just take some of my neutral tint, which is a very neutral gray color. I do a lot of videos on how to mix grays, um, but for the sake of time on the live, I am going to just pull out this neutral gray color, and I'm going to water it way, way down. Now, the biggest key to doing, so his beard is white. So it should translate as a white beard, but it has a lot of shadows in it that show you the texture. Um, is to get your gray to be super, super light. So when you first put it out there, you might think it looks pretty light in color. So you start and you're like, oh, that's really light. And then you put it on your page. And if you put that on his beard, it's gonna look not what you're looking for. It's gonna be too um, blocky and more cartoony. I mean, this is an illustration, but you really want a very subtle light color. And that means adding a lot of water, a lot of water, and then cleaning off your brush completely and only picking up the watery color and not having any color kind of left in your brush. All right, before I get started on this, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser. Um, these are great to have. I definitely recommend having these if you are going to be painting in watercolor. How many of y'all out there have one? Let me see it. If you don't have one and you use a regular eraser, these are going to improve your life. Um, so I can use this and I just blot it right on my pencil lines. It's going to lighten them up significantly or erase them completely, depending on how much pressure you put on. And it's not gonna leave all those like little crumbs behind. There's no crumbs, there's no mess left behind um, that you have to deal with or work with. It hasn't damaged the surface of your paper. Watercolor paper has something called sizing on it, which is like a, a, a coating that regular erasers can damage and then it changes the way watercolor reacts when you put it on the page. So get yourself a kneaded eraser if you don't already have one. All right, so for the shadows of the beard, we are painting the shadows. So the first thing I'm going to do is go under the nose. There's always shadows right under the nose. Less is more when painting white things. You can always add more color later. So if you put it down, you're like, oh, that's too light. It's just, it's not, that's okay. Keep going, let it dry, reassess, add another layer. So under the brim of the hat, there's going to be a shadow on his beard here. And then I'm just going to start to put in some of these shadows that would be like under the chunks of hair. And you'll notice not all of them are really, really thin. Some of them are, 
Um, but some of them are thicker because a shadow under a chunk of hair can be thicker than that tiny little string that you want to kind of draw in to indicate the lines of the beard. So some are thicker, some are thinner. And then I'm going to go in. I am going to use one other brush. If you have one, you can also use a liner brush. Actually, I have packed all my liner brushes up. Hold on, hold please. All right, I'm back. I had packed them all up for class last night. I had to bring them to a class I was teaching because um, we were making pine, pine sprigs. All right, so I have my liner brush, this really skinny, skinny long brush. This makes adding fine details really super simple. All right, so I'm gonna go in with a little more of my gray and my liner brush and put in some really thin details. Now, if this doesn't seem, and it looks weird without the nose, it looks still kind of washed out, but put this in and then later on, after you've put in your main shadows, All right, after you put in your main shadows and you've done your nose and everything is dried, if you feel like you need to put in a few extra really dark strokes, which I think these are actually a little too dark in my sample here, but if you wanna put in those much darker def defining strokes, you definitely can. But look, there's only one, two, three, four that are darker. I didn't do a lot, but just those two kind of really made those sections pop. All right, let's get to the nose. Okay, so we do have to do a little color mixing for the nose. Um, most people don't have a flesh tone color um, and flesh tones come in so many different colors. So I'm gonna do a basic kind of Nordic, light, fair, uh, pinkish skin tone for this. Let me clean out this well so that we can start from scratch. Even though it's the tiniest part of the painting, it's one little piece. It does take the most amount of work to get that skin tone. But once you learn how to mix skin tones, you can do anything. You're magic. Okay, so I usually start, depending on what type of skin tone I'm doing, but if I'm doing a lighter color to fair skin, I usually start with um, a red or a pinkish color. Um, I'm going to go with a and crimson since keep our colors simple. So you can see I used a very basic alizarin crimson. Okay, I'm gonna add the tiniest bit of cadmium yellow to that to orange it out a little. So red and yellow make orange, right? Okay, so we're already pretty close. We have this orangey kind of flesh colored skin tone and the more water I add to it, the lighter it will get. Okay, so I started with a little alizarin crimson and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow. Now, if you want it to be, if it's too yellow for you, you could definitely add a little blue. If you add a little cobalt blue or ultramarine, and I'm talking the tiniest amounts here, okay? Skin tones, that will cool it down a little and almost make it look a little kind of ruddier or purplier, kind of moving towards the, the gray side. So you can see, uh, I don't even know if you guys can tell the difference on there. Let me get a little more going here. Oop, wrong blue, okay. So you can see here, this is a much darker version I just made. So if I add a ton of water to that, look at that. It can be a nice, really light, peachy color skin tone. All right, so let's start with this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this darker version actually, okay? I'm gonna pick a bunch of this up. Thank you, thank you, Rhonda. All right, and I'm gonna go around the bottom of the nose with this darker color and across the top, kind of leaving the center and even, you know, I'm gonna move that open space towards the front of the nose. So I've left kind of a white gap in there. All right, and all I'm gonna do is take my brush with clean water and put that right in the center and just touch the edges where the paint is. So that's going to allow the paint to kind of bleed in, but also um, 
leave the edges a little darker. And if you need to pull a little bit out to leave that highlight there, that's great. All right, so we're gonna let that dry for a minute or two, not completely dry, but get very close. We want it to be like a matte dry um, where it has like, it's not shiny, but it's like a luster. And that means it'll still bleed a little bit when you put more color in, but it won't get out of control. So we're gonna wait and add in another shadow there. All right, so while we do that, let's go back to our gray and let's do our little puff ball up here and then we'll do our shadows and we'll come back and finish off our nose and then we will be done. Um, so the little puff ball, we'll go back to the gray that we used for the beard and we're gonna go right in the center here where the hat meets the little puff is going to be the largest concentration of shadow. So just a jagged little shadow there around. And then you can take your brush and just add in a few more spots. You can put one or two even little darker spots. And that's all you really need for the puff ball. It's very subtle, but it translates. It translates. Someone says, oh, that's a, that is a little cottony puff ball at the top of this hat. All right, so let's do shadows while our nose, well, our nose might be dry enough. All right, so you're gonna take some more of that color. I'm gonna make more. I'm going super dark here. All right, so you're gonna take more of your flesh tone color And you want a pretty good concentration of it, a little bit darker. And again, you're gonna go around the bottom and across the top, because there's a shadow up there. And just deepen that transition, or that darker area along the edge. There you go, and you still have your little highlight there. Now he has a ruddy little nose. Okay. Where are we going next? Shadows. Shadows, dioxazine purple, or any purple that you have. Let me just clean this out, start from scratch again. Dioxazine purple. And then I'm gonna gray this purple out just a little bit by adding some yellow. So I still want it to be purpley, but more of a gray purple. And add a bunch of water. I'm gonna switch back to my larger brush for these shadows. And now everything down here is already dry, which is great, because I'm just gonna go right under my little gnome guy here and right under my bag and we're gonna have light kind of coming from this way because it's kind of on the hat this way and it's on the bag this way. So I'm gonna have my shadows kind of go out in this direction behind these folks, the bag and the gnome. I'm gonna rinse my brush off with a very light touch. Just remember, shadows don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be the perfect representation. The general shape, you know, you don't want your shadow like super long and tall, but they don't have to be the perfect representation of the thing above it. It's not how shadows work. Unless you have a really harsh light. So there we go, there's our shadows. That grounds our piece, um, gives them something to stand upon. I think that looks great. I would go, um, I won't do this live with you guys because we're almost at the 40 minute mark, but I would go back after my shadow dries and I would probably add another layer of a lizard crimson here, trying to keep these highlights going, but I feel like I could go even a little darker on the bag. Um, are there any other questions out there about stuff that we did? We could go back in or things that you would have done differently. We can go back into that beard. I'm gonna take some of this purple with my liner brush and I'm gonna add a few slightly different color, darker or, um, details to the beard. 
right under the nose. Thanks, Rhonda. Thank you, Dawn. All right, well, feel free to ask any questions while we finish up the details. Again, this live will be up if you're watching it after the fact. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. I will be doing more lives. I promise I will get a regular time, Dawn. Um, I know I got to work on that. Um, and check out the description for links to materials and supplies and also um, for the studio crew if anyone's interested in that. And yeah, that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. All right. I'm just finishing up. There we go. And again, you can go back in and add your details. And I think I'm actually going to add, where's that purple? I'm going to add a really, ooh, it's wetter than I thought it was going to be. But I wanted to add a really dark shadow under here. But this was definitely a little wetter. I thought it had dried more. All right, so on Sunday, I'll be putting up another video of more holiday card recommendations of different ideas. So feel free to check that out. Um, I have a cabin in the woods painting coming up and a new cardinal. I'll be teaching those in person and I'll be doing a video for those as well. All right, I think we're done. Thank you so much. Thank you, Linda, for joining me. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Dawn. Let me scroll back up for others. I can't always see everybody's names unless you comment. So thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your afternoon and take care. As always, it's a pleasure painting with you. Happy painting, everyone.